Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to talk about rising water. Y'all stay tuned. Hopefully we'll catch some more. If I take you down, would you really hold me down and be your best friend? She just want to hit me with a quickie by the pool and I'm like, yes, ma'am. When you got me feeling for your body, you might turn me to a yes, ma'am. Missed him that first time, flipped it right back on in there and she took it. I'm gonna put her in the well and uh, hopefully we'll have enough to um, get a good looking picture at the end of the day. Y'all stay tuned. Oh, yeah. 80 and a 40, I'm a nervous bitch, I'm flat in your ex, man. We ain't gotta go outside. Two step in the rain, the rain. wake up by my side. spring flooded timber flooded trees flooded bushes flooded limbs leaves trash mats flooded grass flooded flowers flipping that's what it does for you right there that's she's looking about four and a half to five an easy four and a half oh god that's a that's a pretty good one we're gonna get back at it see what we can't do Doing this right here, you got to, got to, got to, got to, got to make sure you're checking your line, retying, or in these clear water situations that you've got to use that 17, 20, 25 pound line. You're going to lose a lot of fish. You're going to break a lot of them off if you're not checking that line. After you catch one, checking it every once in a while if you're getting hung up, making sure that hook's not bent. You know, there's a lot that goes into this. This is one of the hardest types of fishing there is. By far, one of the hardest types of fishing there is. And uh, in order to make it easier on yourself, um, it's easier just to take the time to retie, check your line, run your fingers over your line, make sure there's no scratches, nicks, whatever in your line. It makes it 10 times easier on yourself and you're gonna land 10 times more bass by doing it. You're not gonna break off as much and um, you're gonna be more prepared whenever those bites and those strikes come. So um, I'm gonna hop back up front, we're gonna get back to it and hopefully catch a couple more, especially if we can catch some more like that. So, let's go. Oh yeah, she know the deal like an old script, You ain't the first to really sell that shit. Champagne with the roof gun, bump the jam back in Tucson. Think I got to get a move on. Never had much to lose, but you could do better with me in the middle of the road. Back of the Jeep, so baby, 
Let's not talk about it, but I gotta know if I take it down. Would you really hold me down and be your best? Wanna hit me with a quickie by the pool and I'm like, yes, man. Hello, and welcome back. And I bet you really, really like that braid in your face. I'm sorry about that. We'll get that out of the way. Anyways, today is currently April 16th. I filmed that video on April 14th. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm just now putting it out. And I hope I'm not late for anyone that's watching it. But, um... I really, really just put off editing that video about the best I could to the best of my ability. Uh, now, going off of high water, muddy water situations uh, in the springtime, these bass during the spring, they want to be up shallow in the first place, so high water just gives them an even better excuse, in uh, my opinion, to get up there dirt shallow, two inches of water, head up to the bank, sitting in the mud, up under or around some kind of cover, like trees, um, leave, leaves, leave, leaf mats, there you go, that's, that's a better way to say it, uh, grass mats, uh, lay down sticks, uh, limbs, which are the exact same thing as sticks. Anyways, I threw everything from all the high water situations that you can possibly imagine. Um, started off through the spinnerbait, nothing. Had one follow up on it and I believe it was an eight inch spot. And um, threw the swim jig, no takers on that. Threw a chatterbait, I finally was like, uh, Let's just put a worm or a jig in our hand. And um, for a while, I flipped around uh, this without the three-quarter ounce tungsten. I threw around a half ounce tungsten, but I threw that around and um, threw it on braid. Had no takers on it. And I was like, man, this is, this is weird. Usually, I can smack them on it. Well, I got out a rod that I had 17-pound fluorocarbon on. Um, Seaguar, by the way, not sponsored. You should sponsor me, Seaguar. Threw that around for a little bit, and finally, as soon as I switched to regular line, um, started getting takers on it. And my thought process on that is that the water was high, yet it was clear at the exact same time. And those fish, especially in the spring, they're already finicky enough, wanting to move up and everything. And uh, usually they bite a little bit better with that higher and muddy water, but higher water makes fish bite better in my opinion most of the time and you've got to figure out whether it's braid, whether they want a worm, or a crawl, or a creature bait. Um, I started off flipping a D-bomb, they would not touch it, and then I finally pulled out a black and red Senko. Didn't even know I would ever use these things, to be honest with you, um, but black all around is one of my favorite colors, uh, day fishing, night fishing, muddy water, clear water, it doesn't really matter, I usually honestly have black tied on almost 24 7 something in the rod box usually has black in it or is completely black so i finally got out a regular flipping rig um on that day because of the clarity of the water i didn't want to um use braid 
And on braid, I won't, I, I won't, whenever I throw this peg Texas rig, I will not put a bead on braid. I don't know why. I just won't do it. And um, the water was clear, but I still wanted something to get those fish's attention. Because usually they get up in that cover, and honestly, if you don't hit them on the head half the time, you're not going to catch them uh, up in that thick of cover and up in the leaves, the lay downs of grass, everything like that. So I put a bead on my Texas rig that I was throwing and flipping around on regular line. And uh, it seemed to actually help out a little bit more. So if you see me doing this little move in the video, that was me sitting there in that cover trying to clack that bead around. And uh, it seemed like it worked because sometimes I know for a fact I had one that I caught on that video um, that I did actually do this. I believe it might've been the biggest one too, or it might've been the one that I missed. But either way, um, all in all, it was a pretty good day. And I know uh, I don't usually do these instructional type of videos, but um, with the coronavirus and everything going around right now, there's really nothing else to do other than fish and hunt. Uh, at least hunt in Tennessee, that is. I know turkey season's open right now, but anyways, there's really not that much that you can do except for fish and hunt right now. And uh, with that being the only things that you can do, there's a lot of people that are trying new things, such as fishing, they're starting fishing again, or they're starting fishing from scratch. And uh, I just figured that what better time to share a little bit about what I know with you guys, just in case that might be um, what you guys are going through right now. Maybe you're getting into something new, or maybe you're starting again from where you left off. Who knows? But uh, anyways, I hope this, this kind of helps y'all a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you this Texas rig up close real quick. This is all it is uh, for that heavy cover. Um, like I said, clear water situation. I like to stick with my 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon uh, cigar. Any other case that I've got muddy water or anything, I will use braid. Um, I'll, I'll use braid and I'll punch, flip, get in the heaviest cover that you can find because that's where those fish are. Um, all I do for my, my uh, Texas rig, throw a peg on there, a sliding peg, then I usually use, usually I use a half ounce tungsten, but in this case, I actually went fishing yesterday and uh, had some grass patches I needed to get through. So I put a three quarter ounce on this one and uh, I was punching through that grass. I actually caught a couple, but of course didn't take the GoPro with me. Smart move. Um, and then I roll with a, usually I use VMC. But this is the only flipping hook I had with me yesterday, and I'm almost positive that's a Gamagatsu uh, flipping hook, and it looks to me like a 4 aught or a 5 aught. But um, I just use that, and you hear a lot of people talking about this whenever you're throwing on a flipping hook. Snail your hook, or snail your, snail your knot, that's what it is. You want to throw a snail knot with a flipping hook, and it makes it stick out like that whenever a fish gets it in his mouth. I never do that. I just tie my regular knot and I don't really seem to lose very many fish because of it. I'm sure there's probably a couple situations that if my knot would have been snailed, um, I probably would have capitalized on a bite or something like that. But personally, I just, I don't take the time to snail mine. But if you want to, you can. Uh, you can definitely look up other videos on that and everything. And uh, also, I want to talk to you guys about this this little guy right here um, this little guy right here is the brand new hummingbird mega 360 imaging transducer and that is a gen 3 helix 12 and I want to do a video over the mega 360 whenever I finally get it figured out personally I don't have it figured out myself yet and I don't think it's quite time for it being it is. It's spring, the spawn, the fish are moving up. I, there's really nothing to see yet on it. You've got to get out there. You've got to get deep. I think it's going to be a wonderful and a great and amazing tool uh, to be used on schooling fish. But right now, it just really isn't the time for it. And um, shallow fishing kind of gets in the way a little bit. I can't, can't really lie about that. But 
Uh, either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for next time, and I will see you guys in the next one. See ya. She just wanna hit me with a quickie bottom.